This is the Perkins Grant Project by Paige Thomas, University of South Florida. The presentation was prepared for EVT 6661, taught by Dr. Edward Fletcher. The, object the objectives that are going to be covered today are the historical account of the Perkins legislation, the most recent iteration of Perkins legislation, other legislations that affect CTE, and the implications of the Perkins Act. The Historical Account of Perkins Legislation When the Perkins Act was first presented, the main objective was to make education available to everyone. It did not matter if the student was old or young, graduated or working, handicapped or in the military, the funds were there to help. They wanted to meet every student's needs as well as meet the needs of the workforce. The beginning acts were more concerned with supplying the funds for the individual more than the actual program. The name Perkins was introduced to vocational education in 1963 with the Vocational Education Act of 1963. With this act, him and some others, Carl Perkins, wanted to ensure that everybody would be able to obtain access to quality training based on their needs and wants. In 1968, some changes were made to focus on post-secondary education schools. The Carl D. Perkins Vocational Education Act was first introduced in 1984. This act had two major goals which focused on adult education. In 1990, the act took a new name as it changed the focus on the need to increase knowledge of technology. Knowledge of technology. The act of 1990 was not perfect and suffered, su suffered from some major flaws. Carl D. Perkins Vocational and Technical Education Act of 1998 presented from major changes to the way money was dispersed, people were going to be held accountable, and it set limits to how the money was actually going to be used. The Perkins Grant 4, which is the recent Perkins Grant, funds five major programs. It funds the Basic State Grants Program, which receives 90% of the funds, the Tech Prep Grant Program, the Tribally Controlled Post-Secondary Career and Technical Institutions Grant Program, National Programs, and the Occupational and Employment Information. With the introduction of public schools, more students were attending schools, but yet not all wanted were made for the traditional classroom setting. There was an urge to start preparing younger people for the workforce, especially with everything changing so fast. The word technology was not introduced into the Act until the Act of 1990. This change of name sparked the need to increase the academic and vocational skills needed to work in the world of technology that was being created. The most recent iteration of the Perkins legislation, which is the Perkins 4. The most recent Perkins Act, known as the Carl D. Perkins Career and Technical Education Improvement Act of 2006, or Perkins 4, was created for the purpose of this act to develop more fully the academic and career and technical skills of secondary education students and post-secondary education students who elect to enroll in career and technical education. That comes from the, it's quoted from the Act. In order to complete this goal, and the Act had to hit on seven main points. They needed to increase the rigor of the standards and integrate the CTE standards with regular academic standards. There needs to be a link between secondary and post-secondary CTE courses. The grant money needs to be available for the needs to the improvements that are taking place. Assistance needs to be provided for all the parties involved. Partnerships need to be formed not only with the classroom, but with the community as well. 
Students need to be able to leave the program workforce ready. A major reformation that has taken place recently on the Perkins Act was introduced in 2012 by President Obama. CTE was already in place and was providing a variety of opportunities for all students, but students were not leaving highly qualified. In order to transform CTE, four core principles were introduced, alignment, collaboration, accountability, and innovation. The CTE programs need to meet the standards of the real world. There needs to be a collaboration between all parties involved, meaning the student, the teacher, the community, the district, everybody who is included. Everyone needs to be held accountable and innovation needs to be increased at the local level. Other legislation that impacts CTE. The America Creating Opportunities to Meaningful Promote Excellence in Technology, Education, and Science Act of 2007, better known as the Competes Act, was signed in 2007 by President Bush. This act was the introduction of the acronym STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. This act was reauthorized in 2010 by President Obama. CTE is placed to help prepare individuals properly for the workforce. This innovative impacts CTE programs because in 2011, 20% of all jobs required a knowledge of one STEM field. The introduction of STEM to CTE can only help to improve the students for the workforce. It will prepare them with the type of technology they will need to be using, which will help with productivity. Many people have the misconception that being in a STEM program will only prepare them for a STEM career. Just like every other CTE program, it will prepare you beyond the word STEM. The Workforce Investment Improvement Act of 2012 was proposed to replace the first act. This act was to strengthen and encourage training, whether it was continuing education or preparing to enter the workforce. It required the improvement and accountability from the state and local leaders. Part of encouraging and strengthening training was offering support to career centers. By offering support to these companies, they can provide support to our students' needs to succeed when they leave the program. This act was also set up to help adults increase their math and literacy skills. The School to Work Opportunities Act of 1994 was created to help create a highly skilled workforce. The seven main goals that fit into this act now fit in, pretty much fit into the Perkins Act in some form. They are that you need collaborative partnerships, integrated curriculum, technological advances, adaptable workers, comprehensive career guidance, work-based learning, and a step-by-step -step approach. This act is no longer in place. It expired in 2001. But since then, there has been a demand for a program like this to come back. Implications of Perkins Act How does Perkins impact CTE? Without the Perkins Act, most CTE programs would not be in existence today. In 2014, it is expected that CTE will be awarded $1,117,598,000 in thousand dollars from the Perkins Act. This money will go to make sure that teachers have the materials that they need to read, need readily available to them so they can best prepare their students. The money helps by the new technology that is coming out on a daily basis, for example 3D printers. The money does not just go to materialistic items. It is in place to provide the support that the students and teachers need. 
whether they need support in curriculum, job searches, financial situations, or just guidance. The Perkins Act also impacts CTE with its collaboration throughout the community. Through the Perkins Act, advisory committees are formed per program. These committees consist of students, teachers, community leaders, and business-related people. This is another way that teachers can make sure that the material they are teaching and using is what is being used in the world today. It also can set up opportunities for the students when they leave the program. CTSOs have been around since the Smith-Hughes Act with the start of 4-H. The act that is in place now does not give the support that most CTSOs need. It does not support the travel to contests, banquets and meals, memberships, or promotional items. CTSOs are used to promote CTE programs. They provide opportunities for the students to compete in competitions against students in their own area of expertise. It opens the doors for them to meet many people in the business world as well. CTSOs also have leadership competitions, which prepare the students when applying for a job. Therefore, it is important that CTSOs are supported in the same manner as other parts of the Perkins Act.